Hello everyone and welcome to Veteran Gaming. I am Aaron and today I've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. Oh hell no! No, sorry. No, no, no. Today we're talking about Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes and we're going to be talking about the Imperial Trooper faction. I've had a couple of friends now hit me up and say, hey, what do I do with the Imperial Trooper faction? I want them, but I don't really know where to get started. Help! I need somebody! Help! And the good news is, for the Imperial Trooper faction, it's very hard to go wrong. Uh, they're, they're very versatile, but at the same time, with the only the two leaders, for the most part, you, you kind of know where you're going to head. You just got to figure out some of the side pieces. That's a little bit of a rant, but hopefully it all makes sense here in a minute once we start talking about some of the characters. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. So the important thing to remember about your Imperial Trooper faction is it is possibly the best non-legendary team in the game. As you can see here, every single character is not unlocked through an event. It's simply a farm character, which is absolutely wonderful. It's much more accessible for free-to-play players, which is nice. Um, but also, if you're going to pay to play, then this team, these teams can be picked up and can be super powerful without unlocking anything which is which is just great it's a it's a really fun faction um it's kind of dependent on speed and when i mean kind of i mean it's absolutely dependent on speed must go faster so you're gonna have to make sure you're paying attention to that but uh they can take out some absolutely crazy teams full of multiple legendary characters um, without really even breaking a sweat. So I'm going to try to talk about uh, the two leaders a little bit, and then we'll show some of the teams that work with them. Like I said, there's really only two leaders uh, that you're going to focus on, and it's General Veers and Iden Versio. So we'll kind of dive into their kits a little bit, and then we'll just kind of breeze through some of the other troopers. It's not going to be nearly as in-depth as some of my other guides on like the Jedi or the Bounty Hunters, because a lot of these guys, their kits aren't that extensive, because like I said, they don't in include a lot of marquee characters or legendary characters. They're much simpler characters, but it's the way the leaderships combine and their kits combine that make them so powerful and so effective. So... Why don't we go ahead and talk about General Veers first, because he is probably a little bit more important than Iden Versio right now. What is a general? So when we talk about General Veers, uh, we're usually going to talk about him with Admiral Piet and Colonel Stark, because those three, the you know three horsemen, Holy Trinity, whatever you want to call them, are actually required for the Sith Eternal event to unlock that galactic legend. So they pair well together in a team. They're also needed for the same galactic legend down the road. So don't have any problem grabbing these guys and gearing them up. So the first thing we're going to talk about with General Veers here is his leader. And the, the offense on there is nice, don't get me wrong. But the really important part here is that they're gaining 20 speed and 10% turn meter whenever they gain a buff which is why once they start rolling, they typically don't stop until they've taken out the other team. On his unique here, uh, Empire, Imperial Trooper allies gain offense up for two turns and gain 50% turn meter and recover 10% protection whenever they defeat an enemy. So you already have the turn meter train rolling. If you pick off one enemy, then everything, you're getting buffs, which is increasing turn meter. You're just flat out gaining turn meter, you're gaining protection. It's just crazy. Uh, his This ability is just a full send. It's a full assist. Uh, they're doing less damage, but I mean, you're talking about ability block. It's, it's just great. Um, and then, of course, on his basic, he has a chance to grant speed up for two turns to General Veers and a random Imperial Trooper ally that doesn't have it. So, as you can see, this guy here is all about speed. You want him fast, 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 fast. Uh, the mods I currently have on him are speed set, obviously, and uh, critical, okay? So throw on speed on him. Like I said, you want him fast. All of your troopers you want fast. You must be really fast. Uh, mine is only 260, which isn't the best in the world, but you really only need one that's lightning fast because if he's a character that can throw out buffs, then the turn meter is going to pick up and everybody's going to follow suit. All right, so there is General Veers. Next, let's go ahead and talk about Admiral Piet, okay? 
He is a fleet commander, uh, which I'm really hoping to get that one soon. He is a very fast character. As you can see here, I have him at 289, which is, is starting to get a little bit quicker. Obviously, I would like to have him faster, but he's not there yet. I'm running speed and health sets on him. Um, and then his kit is pretty extensive since he's one of the newer characters. But when you're talking about the Imperial uh, Ambition here, he's actually marking down, um, well, he's marking an ally, so basically he's creating a force taunt. He's the one you want, kill him! Oh, no. uh, which can be nice, that way you can pick and choose a little bit, and theoretically, once the buffs are rolling, th then you're not taking any damage at all, uh, other than a counterattack, so uh, it's not... It's not too big of a hindrance that he's marking down a friend. Uh, he does have a leader. You're not really going to use him too much as a leader just because as a support role, as his tag says here, he's he's just great. Um, he's dispelling all buffs on light side enemies. He's throwing out a mass daze for two turns. Uh, and then allies with inevitable failure gain two stacks, inflict fear on all enemies for one turn. When allies with inevitable failure gain five stacks, it's just it's just a wonderful, wonderful support kit. He's a pretty quick character. He's needed for Sith Eternal, so he fits very well in with General Veers. Jumping over to Colonel Stark, uh, General Veers is real partner in crime. My PIC villain. What's a PIC? Uh, there's a couple of things here that are real key that help out General Veers. Uh, his scan all wavelengths is gaining critical chance up and critical damage, which are buffs, which is giving your turn your team turn meter. But also for Stark personally, he's gaining 5% turn meter for each Empire ally and each Rebel enemy. So he is also getting faster. On his unique, pretty sick also, at the end of his turn he's gaining health and protection, and he removes 1% which is doubled 2% if everybody's an Imperial Trooper ally, for all enemies for each active Empire ally. So if everybody's a full Empire team, then he's removing 10% turn meter. So your, your team is gaining turn meter through his buffs and through General Veers' lead, and he's also removing enemy turn meter at the end of all of his turns, which is, is just nuts. I mean, you can see why once this team gets started, it's just not going to stop. So once you have kind of those three locked in, it, it, the rest is very, very open. A lot of people consider the best Empire uh, Trooper team down here to be Veer's Piet, Colonel Stark, Dark Trooper, Range Trooper, because Range Trooper is going to put out some buffs also, Retribution. Uh, he's going to also do uh, on his little stompy thing here. You're gaining protection, uh, Retribution for three turns. He's counter assisting. This is all uh, counter uh, counterattack. Sorry, not counter assisting. Counter attacking kind of stuff, and he's calling other troopers to uh, to assist there. So this is the kind of team that can take out a uh, Darth Malik and Darth uh, Revan lineup. This is a very very powerful. It's one of those teams like I wish I had the resources to go into to dive into right now because it's an absolutely wonderful counter, um, but I just haven't had time right now. The team I currently run with uh, is Moff Gideon and Shore Trooper. The one benefit that you get from Moff Gideon in this team is control the situation where he's calling all Imperial Trooper allies to assist, all, but all units lose 100% turn meter, and then allies gain 25% turn meter. So he is completely stripping the other team of turn meter as long as they don't have like a Jedi Master Kenobi that's, that's negating that ability, right? Um, so... I get started, then once I have a couple of turns out, I have got Gideon go, he removes all turn meter, and then I'm absolutely rolling again because he's only giving my team turn meter. He's also a very quick character, as you can see here, he's at 259, and my mods here are not great even though he has a speed set. So he has a very high base speed, he can help you get rolling also. He's fast, he's really, really fast. I mean, he's so fast, he makes... Fast people look not fast. I also run Shore Trooper in my team, and the really the main reason is because he has a pre-taunt. So when you're typically running a team like this best Imperial uh, Trooper team down here, if you are not faster and they start getting a play and they get a stun or an ability block on Veers or Stark or something, or Pia if he's the fastest, you could be in a lot of trouble. 
The nice thing about Short Trooper is he comes with that pre-taunt. So if your team is not faster, you still have a shot of getting your plays going because Short Trooper is going to take the initial brunt attack and then you can get rolling afterwards. So if you're the absolute fastest, maybe you go here for this best Imperial Trooper lineup. If you think you want to take a team out, but they're a little bit quicker than you are, maybe they have one character that's faster, throw in Short Trooper if you have them. That way that pre-taunt is going to soak up that initial hit and then your troopers can get rolling. So it's nice to have a tank in there. He's also attached to the same ship as Death Trooper, which is nice. Anytime you can get a character with a ship involved uh, is wonderful. So just talking about this team again real quick here. Veers is uh, 4C light, very accessible. Uh, Pierre Piet is 6B, so a little bit farther in the game, but not too bad. Uh, Colonel Stark is guild store, so that's real easy uh, to knock out. Moff Gideon, they moved, and now he has two nodes, which is wonderful, Cantina and a hard node. Uh, good old Short Trooper is a little bit later in the game. He is 9B, um, so that's that's a bit of a bummer, but you get a ship out of him, which is nice. Uh, Dark Trooper here we'll throw up on the screen. He's uh, 1C. He's super early farm now. Range Trooper uh, 3A, so he's real early too. So if you want to go for a very early farm here, you can absolutely make that happen. I don't really recommend it right away because it's not a great team once they start taking damage, right? So they're not going to get you very far in, say, a galactic war kind of setup because they just don't have the sustainability. They're not really regaining as much health and protection as some other teams. Um, but they can be crazy, crazy, crazy powerful in one battle fights. So, now that we've kind of talked about the General Veer's lead, we're going to throw in Aiden Versio. Uh, Aiden Versio, as a leader, the main thing you want to remember here is she gives a crazy amount of bonuses with critical chance, speed, offense, all that kind of stuff. But you have to have her as the only leader. So, you can't throw a uh, Admiral Piet in with her. You can't throw a Moff Gideon in with her. But all of these other random troopers, even Colonel Stark, who doesn't have a leader ability, all of those other troopers can fit in with Aiden Versio nicely. And she gives them crazy buffs that are going to really make this team, team solid. I mean, this even at five stars, she makes this a very, very solid defensive team. As you can see here, I haven't even had a chance to put anything into her, really. Uh, I, I really think I might try to get something into her before I push for my next Galactic Legend because she's so strong defensively and teams constantly underestimate her. Um, she also uh, does some revive action, which is crazy annoying unless you have somebody like Supreme Leader Kylo that prevents it, or Gas that prevents it. Um, so she's buffing all of these random... These random, I, I don't want to say random, but less used troopers. You never used to see these guys at all until Aiden Versio came out. So Aiden Versio, the one downside we currently have for her in almost October of 2022 is she's not an accelerated farm yet. She only has one. So she's going to be a much slower farm. That's why I'm not working on her at all. But you can pair her with Magma Trooper here, who's a Galactic War Store farm. Um... And he has a real nice thing here where uh, on his secondary, it's an AOE. He's removing 30% uh, turn meter. And then he has a 70% chance to remove another 30% turn meter. So that's another one that can be used with general veers to uh, make sure that you guys are keeping the train rolling because you're removing their turn meter. Um, Magma Trooper has 30% tenacity and gains 70% turn meter the first time he resists a detrimental effect. Uh, on his unique and he's also gaining tenacity or giving tenacity to all imperial trooper allies good old death trooper here that shares the ship with short trooper he's a pretty late farm at uh, cantina 8a and it's just hard to find time because there's so many things you need cantina energy for uh, he pairs specifically with krennic uh, and Krennic's new Omicron that comes out, but he can uh, be used to do quite a bit of damage in a bunch of other teams like Aiden Versio or the General Veer's lead. Um, his Death Trooper grenade here is a damage to all and dispel all buffs, which is wonderful. Uh, his Terminate is going to do a ton of damage, uh, inflicting Death Mark, which can't be resisted. Targets terminate defeated by Terminate can't be revived, which is nice. Um, and then on his basic here, He's just got the chance to inflict days, which is 
absolutely great. Running down to Stormtrooper here, good old boring tank. Uh, you get him from Cantina Energy or uh, Store Credit, whatever those are called, and from Light Side. So he has two farm places, which is nice. Um, he's still a little bit lackluster. Uh, you know, it's hard to put a Zeta in. It's, I, I don't know. It's hard to put a Zeta in. He does all right, but you're not going to gain anything too special from him. Uh, but he does have a taunt, which is nice. So, I don't know. He's still kind of lackluster. Eidenversio is what all the bonuses that come with Eidenversio is what really helps. Uh, Snow Trooper here, which you can gain uh, from Cantina 7B and 8C Light Hard. Uh, is It can actually wallop a punch uh, on his unique here. He's gaining turn meter whenever any unit is defeated. And other Empire allies gain half that amount, which is really nice because it's any unit. It's not just your team. So if you throw him in with General Veers, again, that turn meter is going, especially with Stark, right? So if somebody else dies, both Stark and Snowtrooper here are giving turn meter. His AoE attack is going to gain critical damage up for two turns, which, again, if you have him under Veers lead, is going to gain that turn meter. Uh, his basic there is just a 50% chance to inflict ability block. And that's pretty much it for them. So these, uh, let's go back to the main screen here. Okay, so the Imperial Troopers are really great. Once you have that solid core built of Veers, Stark, and Piet uh, especially, you can mix and match the other ones. You can really throw in some fun combinations. Uh, like I said, speed is the key. You have to get that turn meter train started. So make sure you have really, really, really fast Imperial Troopers. And if you don't, if they have maybe one person that's faster, make sure you throw in a tank like Short Trooper that has a pre-taunt. Um, unfortunately, Storm Trooper does not have a pre-taunt. Um, but hey, Shore does. And sometimes Shore is all you need. So that's kind of the spiel about Imperial Troopers. Uh, a really fun team. Like I said, most of the time, once I start attacking, I don't stop until the other team is dead, which is a... Fun, fun, fun time. Um, but there are very mix and match. There are a little bit more ideal combos, but all of them work. And a lot of them are very easily accessibly farmed. Um, they're just a fun, good faction. If you guys haven't put anything into them, make sure you're putting at least some resources into them because there are a lot of challenges uh, and specific events that come up that are Imperial Trooper specific. So there it is. There is my rant on Imperial Troopers. Uh, hopefully you guys liked it. Hopefully you learned something. If not, hopefully you just enjoyed listening to me rant for a little bit. Please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the notification bell to catch all upcoming content. Give me a big thumbs up if you can. And as always, have fun. Good luck, and I will see you on the hollow tables. So I got that going for me, which is nice.